right back in the soup. So, uh, Le Havre's quest line is still kind of broken. I'm working on getting some uh, support tickets made up about the Monolithian not spawning. I am actually starting at this point to consider, uh, you know, starting a brand new marked one game at some point. But I think before doing that, I'll, you know, I'll do what I can in terms of quests that are still here, and I will, uh, you know, go on and start collector mode in, uh, you know, using this save line. Or something like that. Because as much as I don't want to have to do a full restart, because, I mean, look at my gear! That's a That's amazing and awesome. I'm awesome. Oh god, I just made a I, How I Met Your Mother style joke. I feel ashamed. God, that show is terrible. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know. The show might actually not be that bad. I, all I know for sure is that, you know, it's a lot like Modern Family in a way. The way it's advertised really puts me off, you know, from ever wanting to see the show. But when I actually watch Modern Family, it's actually pretty uh, humorous. <laughs> anyway, uh, humor through mixing together words is terrible. And I still say, still say, given how the actual map layout is, I'm gonna fire this up again just to show it and remind myself. Considering how the actual map layout is, I still say the exit from this base to the rest of the map. This is this goes both for a clear sky and for this map's. Uh, reappearance here. It should be on this end. Because, again... Although you can't open this gate and just walk out normally. For legitimate story reasons in Clear Sky, you know, they don't want you to know how to how exactly to get to, to, get to their base. The path... The surprisingly safe path at that. Also, I don't know what I did with the HDR settings, but... I really like how it's looking right now. This looks like natural, real sunlight that you would find uh, looking outside your window. Looks great. But yeah, this is the path that gets you back here. Just had to do a little bit of uh, fence hopping. Anyway, I'm just thinking that you know that would make it make a little more sense. Frame rate's still annoying me, so it looks like that uh, core affinity trick, the new one that I uh, came up with. <clears throat> you know, saying in the game to not use core zero. And letting the uh, recording program use every core. It doesn't exactly help with this level by the looks of it. Pretty unfortunate, but I think I'm going to try something like that with Deus Ex Nihilum whenever I get it back to uh, playing that. Because the only problem I have with that is uh, trying to record things with it, because uh, by default that's set to only use Core Zero, because using multiple cores makes Deus Ex go uh, a little unstable. More than a little unstable. But uh, using just Core Zero makes recording impossible with a program like this. And of course, with Shadow Play, uh... <laughs> well, with Shadow Play, and on, under different circumstances, it wouldn't matter. Under the current circumstances, I just cannot get this microphone to uh, broadcast loudly enough without having to turn down uh, game audio settings by a significant degree to get Shadow Play to. Uh, you know, work real nicely with how I have to record things at the moment. <laughs> Plus, I'm kind of left with nothing but the hope that, uh... The hope that 
you know, they fixed the issue where occasionally uh, recorded clips will have a roughly 200 milliseconds desync of uh, audio to video. Hey, look, we got a loner camp out here. Hmm, A Life seems to have woken up on this level a little bit more. I mean, they're just generic NPCs, so, uh. They don't serve any greater purpose out here. I mean, they would if I had stuff to sell, but uh, I don't. Just overall, you know, it's it's nice to see that A Life is working enough to have some people fill out the zone. Grab that sparkler. Okay, I'm going the wrong way anyway. Well, no, no, I was going the right way. I just took a detour because I saw loners. Right, I'm heading up to the agroprom. Because while the deserter is, uh, la to my last knowledge, MIA, <clears throat> still, that his cabin is where the document Sakharov wants says, uh, are, rather, um, supposed to be. Ah, and here's this, uh... It's called a Pripyat-style anomaly. Well, that's what I'm calling it, preliminary... Preliminarily? That's not even a word, I don't think. Uh... That's just what I'm calling it, because that's what I, that's where I remember this. Although apparently, according to Stalk, yeah, according to Grimwald from the Stalkerverse channel, uh, apparently that's something that was in the Stalker movie as well. It's been a long time since I lost, lost, last watched that, and of course it was only a Netflix DVD rental, so uh, I don't exactly have a copy of it anymore. I mean, I did make myself a copy when I had it rented. Oh no, the MPAA is now going to track me down and have me killed for doing this. Uh, but it came out terrible because my capture card... Uh, what's the deal with all this foliage? This is terrible. Foliage, you are fired. Get out of here. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Oh. Okay, just snorts. You know what, I'm getting a good feeling. Because if I'm seeing A-Life out in areas like this where I don't remember seeing A-Life before... I mean, I'm not going to teleport myself back to the uh, lab just to check that. You know, I'm not that confident about it, but... It's telling me that things are starting to work more properly again. <sighs> But yeah, I, I used my <clears throat> capture card at the, at the time to uh, try to make that dupe of uh, Stalker and Andrei Tarkovsky's uh, film. And I used the S-Video input, which makes things unwatchably bad in quality because the capture card is broken. Another soul. All right. <laughs> Ever since I found out that the soul leads to this family of really amazing artifacts, especially this tier, I'm actually really glad to find them. Let's see, what's... what are the stats? Yeah, the basic so, so, basic soul is, you know, just another meat chunk style artifact that's a little bit better while still res destroying your rupture. And impact protections. <laughs> but as soon as you get them even slightly upgraded, um, they become quite useful. This is where the controller... Yeah, this is where the one for that quest spawned. Ah, it's just a sparkler. Oh well, it'll fund about a tenth of a box of ammo or something. Yeah, I've gotten enough carrying capacity.
And hell, you know, I think I can just kind of rush in here because I'm using a shotgun. And, uh, well, you know how powerful these things are. As long as they're using the buckshot style uh, ammo. Thought I saw an explosive barrel there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is just... I mean, again, uh, it, it makes me happy to see a shotgun that actually have a reasonable amount of power. Because in games, they're almost always... Oh, man. We didn't have anything interesting on them. Yeah, in games, they're almost always gimped. Be it in range... Where you know you got the Call of Duty style shotguns uh, with pellets that disappear after 10 inches. <laughs> or in general usefulness. Whereas here, you know, the shotgun is just annihilating. And really, the only problems I see with it uh, are, you know, 30 meters in a game where the maximum switch distance is 150 meters, and the maximum distance you're likely to see anything is much less. 30 meters is not a f long distance at all. And the other thing is, you know, the slugs and the darts are not that powerful at all. So that's really where I see the, um, lack of balance coming in. You know, with regards to frame rate, I have to wonder if this lev <clears throat> if this level is partially to do with it. Cuz I know this variation of it was definitely made, you know, with the DirectX 10 renderer of Clear Sky in mind it was intended for a stronger build of the engine with stronger capabilities and stronger DirectX. So it, it might just be the case that it's not a hundred percent easily uh, compatible with this outdated version of the engine. Didn't think I was close enough to be hit, but. <laughs> Okay. What can I make with this again? Ah, uh, yeah, that I've already taken care of. Okay, I was thinking of making one of those, but I need another one of these first, and I don't remember how to make them. And of course, this is the absolute best place to make uh, any sort of artifacts because they don't. Uh, rather, the weather doesn't have any emissions. Okay, I need an electro porcupine. And I need to put it into a fruit punch for two hours, which conveniently is right about here. There we go. I need to find that uh, <coughs> recipe. Whatever one takes the aspic, or no, the symbion. Whatever, whichever one takes the symbion and turns it into something amazing. Yeah, to be honest, it is kind of bizarre to see this in the dream sequence. I know why it is. You know, GSC actually put this... This really terrible quality version of this dream sequence uh, in the dreams folder. With the higher quality versions that actually line up with the audio um, in the cutscenes folder. 
He's... I'm just confused as to why. Acetic porcupine. Now we can make the uh, other one. Nine hours. Oh look, it actually didn't take. <laughs> actually didn't take one I had equipped. Color me surprised. Is that an artifact I see over there? No, it's uh, one of those fire things. Alright, now we have a variation of... I think that's the Lab X10 dream. Ah, I completely forgot. Apparently these are the uh, rations that you need for that one quest for, uh... Sue's love? Size love? Somebody. I forgot to put it in the stash. Oh well. I still need to find the spawn codes for the mushrooms, because I'm tired of them disappearing. I mean, at the, at the very least, what I want to do is, uh, spawn in the ones that I know I've lost. Because I'm pretty sure I've picked up and carried, uh four or five of them. Stone Pokebine. Now, what are the stats of this again? I <laughs> went through all the trouble making it. don't remember the stats. <sighs> Velp, pretty much amazing. So what do I have that reduces electric shock? That's what I'm curious about. What is harming my electric shock protection? I don't have any moonlights or any of that family equipped. Ah, the acidic porcupines, that's right. Um, let me let me look, actually. I think I compared these before, but I may need to do it again. Negative 55 plus 100, negative 60 plus 77. Okay. So, there's really no reason not to upgrade to that, because, I mean, lose a little bit of endurance and lose the chemical burn, which isn't that useful, because, I mean, really... It's easy to avoid these unless you're going into Lab X18 and going to the end, because some idiot decided that putting it right below the door where you cannot possibly escape is a bad idea. Or would be a good idea. It is a bad idea. Hmm. Yeah, now I'm in a slight bit of trouble because my current artifact loadout is not... Um... It's slightly less good at uh, <clears throat> getting rid of radiation. I'm just going to put these on for now to help out. And... Make sh <laughs> to make the video extra exciting, let's sleep some more. I think I'll do two eight-hour sessions of sleeping here just to make it... <clears throat> well, I don't know. That would make it about three in the morning. No, 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 it wouldn't. It would if uh, there were 20-hour days, but... <laughs> oh, great, now i got to do math. It would make it very late at night. Oh well. You know what? Late at night makes the uh, hardcore mutant spawn. Gives me more chance to have some fun. As I'm, uh, wow, just about out of food again. Just seems like not long ago at all I was, <clears throat> you know, carrying around 
a couple hundred pieces of food. All oh, right, of course you can only carry. <sighs> Stupid. God, I hate these pointless re restrictions. I guess I'll put this on. <clears throat> Yep, another great thing about having a headset, they often come with the mic mute switches, and, uh, you know, it's a lot handier for cutting out times I have to cough than hoping that I find the time to go through and editing and cut the audio track there. Alright. Pretty dark at night, as one would imagine, and the lighting looks pretty cool. See, this is where the static lighting of Stalker maps actually looks nice. Although there's... Uh, no? Okay, no. There isn't a lack of shadowing, prop, proper shadowing. I think, that, I think that's more or less the ticket, really. For lighting in Stalker to look good, it has to be dark. Because when it's bright, it looks... I mean, it, does, it doesn't look like uh, some really shitty-looking game. You know, it certainly isn't a Call of Duty with their uh, shadow map resolution of, like, 64 by 64. But when the lighting is bright, it's, you know, kind of flat. Anyway, let's go to the Agriprome. What's the point of this teleport again? Really. For God's sakes. What is the point? Please, someone tell me. What is the point? What were the feeble minds behind Nardonia Siljanka, DMX, DKZ, etc. thinking when they decided, Hey, let's put a teleport next to a level changer. Such that the user will only be able to go through the level changer if they walk next to the radiation sign. Oh, isn't that clever? No, it's stupid. You know, it's really a lot like what Grimwald was saying when he was going through the labyrinth level. Trapped inside the mind of a 12-year-old. Maybe not exactly like that, but... Really, it's... It's really just kind of stupid game design. It's... We do it because we can... style. You know, when I'm working on a website at work... You know, a web page at work... I could very easily just throw in... Three duplicate copies of a list view. You know, I could easily throw in... Three links that are meant to take you to the same place... That are randomly placed each time you load the page, and you have to guess which one works right. You know, I could do that. I wouldn't, because there's no point. But that's really the kind of game design that you see a lot in Starker Soup, and it's what... it's ultimately... <sighs> what causes the complaining that, you know, pops up during these uh, recording sessions. It's just the pointlessness of, uh, let's put a teleporter here. Deploy a teleporter here. Let's put it here, uh, you know, right next to where the user needs to go. Why? Uh, where we're going, we don't need explanations. And if user thinks it's too hard or too stupid, we just call them shitty players that don't have enough skill. Slightly similar to what happened when I complained about OGSE. About the oh. mutant health being ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> complained about it on the ModDB page, and the author's like, Well, the Russian... No. I must have remembered the accent. Well, the Russians, you know, they're saying it's too easy. Are these, by any chance, the Russians? <laughs> 
that live in their parents' house. And you know, just kind of sit there. <clears throat> have nothing to do all day but play games. Or, you know, are they sadists? Oh, the game is not good and difficult enough unless it takes 1,500 bullets to kill a single boar. Who can kill you in one hit? Nyat, I say. Adrenaline, what have you got for me? An RPD, which is a really nice weapon with really terrible animations. <laughs> Apparently, one of the scar weapons is supposed to actually be a lot better than the other one I used, but I don't remember <laughs> if I was using the H or the L. <clears throat> so, the little MP5 type weapon. Ah, the 74 Cobra. Really like that weapon in Misery. Don't know how good it would be here. Zastavia. M92 mod. Beretta Stars. Okay. No. Just no. 8.6 by 70 caliber. Ah, so the TRGs use it. You know, it's not like they're a very rare weapon that you'll never find anywhere anyway. Right? Okay, so... You know, that's really the biggest problem with the Trader in inventories. They always carry ammunition for weapons that they're not selling. And weapons that have no ammunition that they're... And they carry weapons that they carry no ammunition for. I said the same thing in two different ways, but... Oh well, that's really how it is. They just... Like, he doesn't sell anything that fires this. He doesn't sell anything that fires this. Here's an exception. He does sell a, a revolver that fires this ammunition. I think I'll just play around with the revolver a bit, see if it's any good. And you know what, I'm gonna buy, buy some grenades. So I'd like to blow stuff up. The Antidote. And you know, I may as well buy some GPS beacons when I can. Just because I could really use uh, a way to mark some things. need to be making some money soon. You know, I, I really think monetarily the biggest problem I'm having right now is the fact that uh, I'm, you know, I'm not getting the kind of A-life spawns I should be getting. So, you know, there aren't enough people spawning everywhere. Is that the... is that the spy? <laughs> spy creeping around here. It seems I'm not the only spy. You've got blood on my suit. Yeah, the, the way he holds the revolver and pulls it out definitely looks like the Team Fortress 2 spy. Yeah, the sprint looks a little goofy, but it's not terrible. <laughs> oh god. Okay, well... That's certainly not anything close to what I'd call a finished animation. That That's basically storyboard quality. Like, 
Okay, these are the ideas I want. Let's put them in. Oh wait, you are releasing the mod tomorrow? What the hell? Why didn't you tell me this before? I could have... Damn! Now I have no time to clean this animation up! I can't believe you. Eh, yeah, Mark Twin could go hungry for a little bit. I'm too low on supplies. One ham sandwich and two of these. Yep, Deserter is still gone, so I can only hope that the documents Sakharov is looking for are not on his person, but just in here in general. Of course, I have to wonder if he got killed somehow. There we go. Documents found. Simple. <laughs> yeah, did the Deserter get killed? I don't see how. Nothing ever comes over here. The A-Life and Agriprom is too, uh, dead and broken for that to even be a risk. <sighs> what a disappointment. Let's see, I've al- yeah, I've already sent in the autosave log in. Okay, that's not an artifact. <laughs> Already sent an autosave and log and everything about uh, Agriprom's A life, so no need to really worry about it. <sighs> yeah, I see so much potential in this reload animation, and it's just. Precisely as I said, it, it's a storyboard. It's. Uh, it's an idea dump that didn't get a chance to be uh, polished and finished before, <clears throat> you know, before it got sent in. <clears throat> yeah, I'm definitely convinced that that's the case, because, I mean, look at the other animations. They don't exactly scream uh, professional quality, but they're actually finished and have some sort of uh, <clears throat> talent applied. And then the reload is just... <laughs> not a problem, not a problem at all. I've actually got real protection against electric shock now, which is great. And for some reason, almost ran into another one. For some reason, I can't help but think that uh, all of the suits that I've purchased after getting that uh, Scat 9 have just had really bad... Our horror, what the hell are you still, into it, still doing here? I thought you were supposed to move out. But yeah, all the suits have just had really terrible durability compared to the Scat 9. You know, everything. This, exoskeletons, they all just wear out so much faster. Oh no, a rat. Arahara, you're being slightly bothered by a rat. Okay. Interesting uh, fire animation. It's definitely a single action. Eh, it's okay, but not that great. So, yeah, Arhara. Uh, I think I'll give you this revolver. Or will I? I haven't actually tested it on any <laughs> real targets, just rats. So... I think I'll keep it. For now, at least, anyway.
But yeah, I could I could swear Arhara and his crew were supposed to leave. Hmm. You know what? Let's let's go into this place.